Hi, I'm Terry, and I'm nuts about stamping. I'm back today with another Sundays with Sizzix project. This week I'm actually going to create the project right in front of you instead of showing you what it looks like when it's done. I need to create a box to put a birthday gift in for a very close friend of mine. So I thought, well, I'm going to make one and show you how I did it. So here are the products that you're going to need to make this box at home. Did you know that we sell craft gift boxes? We sell them three to a bag and they come like this. I'm going to use two stamp sets, Betsy's Blossom and Bring On the Cake. Some Versamark ink. I have my Rich Razzleberry and Lucky Limeade markers. I'm going to use Clear Block B and Clear Block H for the images. And then for cardstock, I'm going to use Lucky Limeade and I'm going to use the Floral District Designer Series paper. Some Baker's Twine that's Lucky Limeade and then I have a darning needle. Let me see, some paper snips, my snail adhesive, and my, for my Big Shot, the Fun Flowers die and the standard cutting pads. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the Fun Flowers die to create some flowers for the top of my gift box. Let me clear off some spot here, make some room. So I have my bottom standard cutting pad and my Fun Flowers die. And the first thing I'm going to do is layer four sheets of cardstock and cover the largest die cut. It's the largest flower on the die. Cover that up. Put my top standard cutting pad on and then run it through the big shot. And that's going to die cut four flowers for me. Then there they are there. Then I'm going to set up the die again and this time I'm going to do one medium flower and one small flower. It's, over, it's okay to overlap the designer series paper. It'll cut right through both. Get my sandwich organized and then run that through. And then I'll have the flowers for the top of the box. There's the medium one, and there's the small one. All right, I'm done with my big shot for now. There are my flowers. And then I'm going to bring in one of the craft boxes. I'm going to use the medium size flower from the Betsy's Blossoms stamp set and my Versamark ink. And I'm just going to stamp the flower all over the craft box. Just because I think the box looks fairly plain without some sort of decoration on it. So I'm just going to randomly ink and stamp and ink and stamp. And then I think what I'll do, this is the lid with the fold at the top. So I'm just going to add a couple of the blossoms there as well. All right, so we've got that. And then I have what is going to become a belly band. I'll have the measurements for all of the cardstock pieces over on my blog. And so I am just going to stamp a row of the blossoms down, down my belly band. Again, just to add a little bit of detail. Just filling in a little bit. There we go. So I have a row of blossoms. And then I am ready to assemble my box. So the first thing you want to do is fold it on all of the score lines. Here's the bottom of the box. So what you want to do is put, um, there we go. This piece is folded down first, then the two sides, and then the, the piece with the tab on it, and it just pops it into place. And then you're going to fold in these two, and then put the lid on, and there we go. The box is all put together, very quick and easy. 
And then what I'm going to do is fold around my belly band. Now the belly band is not going to fit all the way, but I'm just going to get it in place and crease it like so. Then I'm going to set that aside and bring in my flowers. I've got four of the largest flowers, so I'm just going to bend up their petals on all of them just to give it a little bit of dimension and kind of counter stack them like so. Then I've got my middle flower like that. And then I've got my largest flower that is going to sit in like that. Now, I could adhere all of them with some snail adhesive or I could put some Stampin' Dimensionals in all of them. Or what you can do is bring in your bold or your brights, sorry, your brights buttons. There's a rich Razzleberry large button and some Baker's twine. And then what you can do is sew them all together. I'm going to stop the video right now while I put the flower together. You don't need to watch me sew it. And then I'll explain to you what I did. Back in a moment. All right, so what I did was I threaded my needle and I sewed the button on. You have to push pretty hard to get through it all the layers of cardstock. And then I just tied a knot on the back side. I do have some ribbon cutting scissors, so I'll just trim my knot. And then what I'll do to complete my project is fold up the petals on the flower to make it very 3D looking. And then I have several choices. I can put it on with a piece of sticky strip to hold it on the box permanently, but for the purpose of this video, um, I'm going to use some snail adhesive. I just ran out. <laughs> there we go. Some snail adhesive around the knot. Put it on my box like so. Again, I can fold up all of the pieces. Now assuming that I have already put the gift inside the box, you could make this decoration on top a permanent decoration so that the guest or the, the gift receiver can just um, pull it off and to get into the box. There we go, so it looks like that. And then the other thing I did was I took a piece of scrap Whisper White cardstock and I used the Bring on the Cake stamp set to create a happy birthday banner that, let's see, I can just tuck like so and adhere it down to my box with the banner piece sticking out like that. So there we go. Now I do need to put the gift inside the box, so I'm not going to make this a permanent attachment until I do. I'll have a photograph on my blog after this video is over so you can go and see the completed project up close. For a complete listing of the supplies and the measurements for the cardstock that I used on this project, please hop on over to my blog www.nutsnutzaboutstamping.com. While on my blog, make sure you subscribe to my customer newsletters. There's lots of things happening in August from Stampin' Up! And then I have several events on my calendar of events. So if you live local to the Raleigh, North Carolina area, and you'd like to attend some of my classes, do click on the calendar, calendar of events button. I'm Terry. I am nuts about stamping. See you next time. Bye for now.